Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started in a few seconds. The theme of today's show is um, is really harmony. How do we admit harmony and uh, create harmony in our lives? Um, various presenters that I've called called the Mighty Gents will be with us, and uh, we'll hear from Deshaun Robinson, Kevin Staten. George DeYoung, Larry Stewart, Fred McKinney, and Deontay Dunlop. I see De Deshaun Robinson is 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 here. Deshaun, Sir, how are you doing? Good. Good morning, and afternoon, and evening to you. And uh, okay. Brother Kevin Staten is, is here. Hey, how's it going? Who closes the door? Close the door, but be sure you be sure you keep the the door of opportunity open for all of us now, Kevin. Don't yeah. Don't don't, don't close. Don't, don't don't enclose the the blessings. You know, share yeah. share the blessings. That's the yeah. The, uh, You're good. You're the, good. <laughs> I know. I, mean, I wish my wife thought the same thing, but you know, at any rate, that's why we have the mighty gent show where the where the guys <laughs> where the guys can kind of uh, uh, appreciate ourselves and not be. Be burdened right. by by the Eve archetype, although we, you know, as James Brown says, it's it's a man's world, I guess. But what could we do without them? Uh, yeah, understood. Brother Deontay Dunlap is with us, and and thanks again, uh, Kevin, for bringing Deontay to my attention. And that's that's really the purpose to kind of just grow, grow and expand and reach out. So I appreciate that. Right. Yeah, he's a great guy. Deontay, how are you doing? Just kind of unmute yourself. And Deshaun, I'm going to lean on you to kind of kick us off. Uh, we have a few words we can kind of title this show, but I've just come up with one word, just just harmony. How can how can we create harmony in the various categories? Deontay, good, good afternoon, morning, evening to you. Can you hear us okay? Can't hear you, though, sir. Are we yeah, we need you to. We can't hear you. There we go. But I, I double go. muted myself. How about now? <laughs> no problem, man. My apologies. Be, Sorry about no, that. Uh, 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 it's all it's all good. Be, being in control is, is is the key. I mean, we wish we had a, a mute button for some politicians, right? So <laughs> you know, just uh, is where, where is our sphere of of influence and our locus of control? And that's the purpose of today's kind of session. And Deshaun's going to kick us off, and then Kevin, I'll kind of lean on you. I uh, want to start in like one minute, and then we'll, we could be joined by George DeYoung and Larry Stewart and Fred McKinney as well. Uh, but we'll, as they say, whenever two or three are gathered, it's a, it, it, it's it's worth kind of kind of taking that leap, that leap of faith. Um, uh, without so, I mean, Deshaun, without without further ado, let's let's kind of maximize our next 50, 50, 50 or fifty five minutes. Um, and then we can kind of just rock and roll. And uh, Kevin, I'll kind of lean on you next to kind of share for five minutes. And and uh, uh, folks, are, and then as folks kind of join us, I know C. Pete Larry Stewart is also going to kind of share with us some of his perspectives. And there's this we hear this uh, phrase about C. P. time, but uh, I, I'm, I've turned that to Sankofa time, right? That where you look at the past the present and the future and kind of center ourselves in the moment. So uh, Deshaun, let, 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 let's, let's kick off and we're, we're, we're out of the locker room and on, on the playing field. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And um, again, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, always great to be here um, with a group of great gentlemen. So this kicking it off, I know it was something that this has become something that I've been becoming more focused into. Um, when you start to get a bit, a little bit older, you have children, you start to look at certain things and our topic of health comes up. I know I was having a conversation with my father-in-law. I was like, we live a lot longer nowadays and are we going to just live longer? Or are we going to try to maximize those years? So in this space, um, I've been looking at um, and looking up the term holistic health and holistic health is more about taking a holistic approach to your health. It's, it's mm -hmm. not just um, looking at the symptoms. Is looking at the whole person. So in that, you look at the um, definition of the word health from the World Health Organization. It means that a person is um, healthy in physical, mental, and social areas. Mm -hmm. And then it could be broken down a little further. 
So then it says you have um, good well-being. So when I look at the word well-being, what does that mean? It means are you completely comfortable and happy in your space? So if you look at that from the standpoint of health, if somebody asks you, are you healthy? Are you completely comfortable? And are you completely happy with all areas of health? And how I would look at it to kick it off is there's eight dimensions of health that I, I look at. Mm -hmm. Some people combine a couple of them together, but I, I like to separate them. And those eight dimensions are your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, your nutritional health, spiritual health, social health, financial health, and environmental health. So if I look at it that way, you ask me this question, Deshaun, are you healthy? I would go, okay, well, let's, let's look at that. Mentally, I personally think I am as mentally healthy as I can be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I am completely comfortable. I'm completely happy. A bad day is not a bad day to me. It's just the opportunity for me to have right. Um, so those are some of the things that I look at. Um, I don't have things that affect me mental health. If something happens here, it doesn't affect me overall. So I think I have very, very good mental health. So I would say, yes, I'm very happy and comfortable there. Emotional health could be a little better. Um, I know sometimes I get a little bit more angry about stuff that I, I shouldn't, but, um, overall I'm, I'm pretty comfortable and happy with my emotional health, especially the fact that I'm realizing and understanding the emotional health side of it. Mm -hmm. So I am there. Physical health. No. The reason why is I used to be an athlete. I used to be able to do certain things. And now that I have kids, when I make certain moves, the body doesn't feel the same way it used to. Mm -hmm. I literally stopped playing sports and activities in 2015. Um, after I had my first child and going into the second one, I realized I wasn't there enough for them because I was trying to do athletics. So I kind of gave it up. And since then, the back hurts a little bit more. I go out to play with them. It doesn't feel well. So if somebody was to ask me, am I perfectly comfortable and happy physical health? No, I don't work out enough. I don't exercise enough. And that's one of the things that those things can prevent most chronic diseases. So I, I definitely need to improve there. Mm -hmm. um, nutritional health. Me personally, I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan since 20, 20, um, 2000, 22, 24 years. I've been a vegan. My nutritional health is is pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I eat really well, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. And, and for a human being, you need to have a lot of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds in your diet. Mm -hmm. That's just how it's supposed to be. If you have all of that, you can add the other things in. So I think I'm pretty good there. Um, spiritual health could be better. Um, you know, definitely a spiritual person, um, believe in God. I just don't read my Bible enough. You know, I, I don't do the things that should be done so i could be better there um am i completely comfortable and happy no um do i feel like i'm like bad no but it could be better um social health i would say yes because i'm more of an introverted person i don't really like to hang out too much and go places but some people say you need to have those abilities have those comforts but meeting with you gentlemen now it's starting to be a little bit different you know you can have this space but could it be better yes but for me i am completely comfortable and happy mm -hmm. so I can help you. My wife would say, you're not, you don't talk to many people, but I am happy. Um, my financial health, anybody can always say it can be better, but the difference is I can take care of my family and still have money left over. So I am, I am happy. You know, mm -hmm. that that's why I would, I would say that if I was living paycheck to paycheck and just having to wait to get another paycheck to take care of them, then I wouldn't be as happy, but financially, yes. Um, environmental, this last area I look at it's it's a lot better. I used to live in a house where we had mold here or these things here that causes health issues um i used to live in a place where there's a lot of noise and stuff i moved to a different place um have a different home now and and live in an environment where i'm well the job that i have is pretty well i don't have stress like most people where they just don't like to go to work so my environmental health is pretty well so if i look at these eight areas overall i would say i'm about a 60 to 65 percent healthy now could Excellent. that be better yes so that's Excellent. why i look at it that way is how i break down my values of health. And and everyone, don't don't feel I asked Deshaun to kind of kick us off just to really share what you did that's an excellent job of the various categories. And so don't feel you have to respond to each of those. Uh, <laughs> because if we just talked about physical health with that, that for me that would be like a, a five hour conversation as it is. And and Bro brother Stewart, welcome and brother Gary Monk, good to see you as well. Uh uh, we're going to go with Kevin, Kevin State next. And kind of the procedure is, uh, you know, Deshaun has kind of kicked us off to kind of paint the landscape. Kevin's going to kind of share his own perspective for the next five minutes. 
Um, and then Larry, I'll kind of lean on you to kind of share as well with your, your, your five minute kind of commentary and Deontay as well, Deontay Dunlop. So brother, brother Staten, Kevin Staten, you're up. Um, thank, thank you so much, Tom, for, for having this forum and, and thank you Deshaun, um, for, for sharing. I, I just really think this is, this is very necessary and, um, not just for people that are of a certain age, but especially for the younger generation. Um, so I, in taking that perspective, what I did with mine was I wrote a letter to myself uh, from 1994, 30 years ago. And my letter to myself is, no, I am not okay. Mm. And so this is just gonna be from all those eight perspectives, things that I wish um, somebody would have told me um, at this point and the impact now. So first with the physical, um, dear self, your metabolism is through the roof, but that's going to change dramatically in the next 15 to 20 years. Your workouts have to shorten because you need to focus on your diet. It's really going to come down to what you eat, not how hard you exercise. And you need to stay consistent with your physicals as a black man, but you also need to talk to people in your family about what runs in your family. High blood pressure is coming for you. <laughs> and you need to understand that the day where you used to joke with your buddies about your numbers on the basketball court is going to turn into you talking about your blood pressure, cholesterol, and sugar numbers. Mm. That's going to become a priority. So from the physical aspect, that's what you need to take care of yourself. Um, make sure you treat yourself, but understand that um, eating healthy should really be a lifestyle. You know, when you treat yourself, it should actually be a treat. And, you know, you don't treat yourself every day. Mm, mm. Um, number two, the mental part. Um, you don't just need somebody to talk to, but you need a professional that can help you develop coping mechanisms. Um, the politics and religious beliefs of the person you select are things you need to consider. Mm. I think that one of the things people do with Black men and therapy is people say Black men don't go to therapy or Black men don't want to go to therapy. Well, really what it is is Black men are very careful about who we allow in our safe spaces. And so even in dealing with someone that's a therapist, I know for me, I need to consider how you feel about Black men. Mm. I don't care about your race, your gender, your sexual orientation. If you have some kind of negative baggage towards Black men, then I need to find somebody in terms of something as serious as step therapy and opening myself up. I need to find somebody that respects that. Um, you can't be healed by someone who's diseased mm. with contempt towards you. Uh, my third one, emotional. Stress and rage are lethal combinations. Pay very close attention to your support system. Sometimes the people you call your friends can turn overnight. Mm. And to focus on your personal growth. Because as you grow, uh, it'll really show you who your friends are. Because your friends want you to grow. And your friends grow with you. Um, in relationships... Talking to the younger me, please give yourself time to reflect and heal and don't just take the on to the next one attitude in terms of dating. Mm. If you don't, you may throw away the Michelle Obama and wind up marrying your worst enemy. <laughs> please listen to me. You have no idea. If you want to talk about child support payment, uh, Hawaii's number one, Maryland's number two, and coming in hard at number three is Connecticut. <laughs> Trust me, bro. Number four, spirituality. You know, as a theologian, Tom, this is my wheelhouse. You really need to know the difference between being religious versus being a person of faith. Mm. And I'll tell you the difference. A religious person says that their beliefs dictate their behavior. So they come at you, 
I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop. And you're supposed to look at that first instead of their behavior. Doesn't work that way. A person of faith approaches you from the perspective that my behavior shows you what I believe. Mm -hmm. So for me as a Christian, the greatest compliment is when somebody in the grocery store or something's like that is like, oh, are you a Christian? I can tell by the way you carry yourself or by the way you treat, you know, people around you. Um, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, fruits of the spirit. That's my foundation. I always look at people from that perspective. Are you loving? Are you joyful? Are you peaceful? Are you kind? You know, those qualities. If that's not what, what you have, then I don't really care about all those titles and all that other stuff. Number five, socially. Don't confuse being an introvert with being somebody who just doesn't do well around foolishness. Mm. Um, socialize on your own in your own terms, on ways that you feel comfortable. You know, there are people out there that like things you like. You just have to find. Them. Number six, occupational. Whew. For me as a teacher, I would be telling myself, you're going to represent 2% of all teachers. That's black males. I wish I could prepare you for all the hostility you're going to deal with mm. in the workplace. Mm. And in all honesty, your goal is to not internalize that. 30 years later, you are going to have PS PTSD mm. because they like to say that saying, you got to pick your battles. Well, guess what? As I can tell you as a black male teacher, the battle's going to pick you. Mm. And for most of us that in the workplace, the battle picks us is how we deal with that. Brother um, Kevin, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're reaching the ninth oh, inning over on your end. Okay. Okay. I'm almost done. <laughs> um, environmental, just make sure your house is a place of peace. Um, you know, when you're dating, if you meet a lady who thinks peace and stability makes you boring, that's telling you everything you need to know right there. And with health, um, as Deshaun alluded to, just workplace stress, that's going to be your biggest adversary. Just make sure you have some kind of exercise plan or some way to re relieve that stress in a positive manner so Excellent. it doesn't eat you alive. Excellent. That's it. Excellent. 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 Uh, Gary and, and Larry and, and Sam, uh, again, the procedure is uh, Deshaun has kind of kicked us off and Kevin, has, as you've just heard uh, uh, his, his rendition, and I'm going to ask Brother Larry Stewart to kind of share next. And then, you know, after like a half hour or so, everybody, after everybody's had a chance to, to, to weigh in for five minutes, then we'll kind of, kind of pick up on any comments or reflections. And uh, the, the, this total experience will be for like for another, for another 40 minutes. Larry, let me, let me unmute you. And uh, glad, glad you could join us. Larry was kind enough to kind of remind me that I hadn't sent, sent the, uh, 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 that that I hadn't sent the, the 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 Zoom link to him, so I'm glad glad he reminded me he reminded me yesterday uh, to to do that. They all set, Tom. All set, sir. And, and good to see you. I know yeah, it, 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 as it, with your Marine Corps background, I know you got a lot lot to share. So I'll put you on blast right that <laughs> at the beginning. Well, okay. Well, that that was that was a that was a good start. Uh, I. Uh, I want to thank you guys for inviting me into this group. But uh, yes, I, I, I was a uh, I was a marine. Well, they say you wasn't a marine. Once a marine, always a marine. Mm. And I was a I was I was an officer in the Marine Corps, uh, which during that time there were less than three hundred black officers in the Marine Corps. Mm. So that was in itself was a, uh, a a quite quite a, quite a good experience. Uh, and I was also in a recon unit, which is sort of like the Navy SEAL equivalent, the Marine Corps equivalent to like the Navy SEAL. So there's a, mm -hmm. there's a discipline type thing in there. And and I believe in discipline because I came from a, a family of uh, people who are disciplined, uh, a spiritual family, a, a well close knit family. I was I was educated in a Catholic school. I'm from Baltimore originally, so that sort of like goes hand in hand growing up mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Uh, to the point, I just share a, a quick story. When I went, when I went to camp, the drill instructor would get in my face and says, "I mean, there's nothing you can really do for me." I mean, I, as far as like discipline and, and intimidation, I said I grew up with a, a very strict mother and father and a family, 
I was educated in Catholic school and I went to all boy public school. So I mean, how much more discipline you need? But I, I think Deshaun kicked it off very well and saying those, the five things that I typically base my life on and have based my life on has been reinforced through through my family. I'm, I'm a big on family, I'm sure as everyone else is, mm. e extended family. I mean, I, I go back, my family now in Baltimore is like eight generations. Mm. <clears throat> but, it, but it all starts, uh, well, not necessarily in this order, but your mental capacity is uh is real key and your mental capacity is is based on i believe this the uh the first seven years of your life it's basic psychology or sociology where how you how you're indoctrinated into the world through your family through your friends by having a strong mental capacity uh and morally morally because they sort of develop that whole mental capacity through what kind of morals they have hmm. and uh i'm sure all you can relate to just growing up in America, being a, a black male, your, your morals at times are tested in one way or, or the other. Uh, but one thing, the morals that I always remember from my family was that we, we never really uh, looked into like fitting into the white power structure because that's not necessarily the, the, uh, the, the, the standard that we want to live to. We try to establish our own power structure and our own mm -hmm. standards of living which was good. I mean, you, you get the basics out of that, but then you expand on yourself and become, expand your family to the, uh, not only your internal family, but to, to the family of, of men and the family of women, particularly the African-American community. And 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 spiritual, sp a spiritual base is a, is a real uh, key factor for me in my life. Uh, I'm not I'm not a practicing Catholic right now, but I mean, I, I, I I still believe in the Judeo-Christian way of life is love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm. Uh, and that's a real strong, and, and physical. I've always I've always been a, a real physical person. I mean, I've done uh, endurance races. I mean, I'm, I'm, I just turned 71. And up until three years ago, I was doing the Five Borough Bike Tour in uh, New York. That's right, that's right. Which is a 40-mile a bike tour. Because uh, cause I believe, for me, my roommate in college once said a board Larry Stewart is the worst thing you can have. <laughs> and I, I need to express myself physically in order to maintain a, a certain balance. Mm -hmm. And and it also, I think by having a, a that, that physical balance, it expands my mind. It relaxes me. It takes away stress. It, it just, and it also, it, by, by staying in good physical condition, your body automatically tells you that you need to eat better. Because yes. you cannot be in physical condition and, and by eating bad food or like drinking or doing alcohol or doing drugs like, like that, your body automatically tells you and rejects those things that are not good for you. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and in America, I always say is a, a a financial. You have to be financially secure or financially sound in America. Uh, I always kid people. I started working at six years old. I came from a family of five, and and I've been an entrepreneur. I've been in my own business for over forty years. Mm -hmm. uh, which which leads me to the whole thing of uh, which which I've been focusing on the last I guess like ten years of my life is is purpose hmm. you know is 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 finding the what is my purpose in life you know because I, I I firmly believe that God put us put everyone here for a particular reason I don't I don't think God put us here to be a a drug addict or an alcoholic or anything that's a bad person He, he put us here for a reason. And so is 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 everyone's is everyone's potential to find out what their purpose in life is, mm -hmm. which can be a, a very challenging thing to find out what your purpose mm -hmm. in life is, mm -hmm. and and which led me to the study of of like mindfulness. So, so the last three years, I've been just focusing on things like what mindfulness is, and I'll I'll tell you a quick story too. I I, I read this book on mindfulness, which I'll share with you real quick. It was this book right here. It's, it's coming in backwards. It's, it's, a, it's called Meditation for Fidgety, Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. And, and I was training for the, the Five Borough uh, bike tour. And uh, usually it, it's like uh, I would come home the next day and I would just feel like somebody just beat me with a bag of nipples. Mm. But then I started reading this book on mindfulness. And a mindfulness essentially is putting you in the space of where you are now. You know, and and being purposeful for where you are now, and I think about what's going on in the back, or not what's going to think in the future. Just 
be 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 uh, in in the moment. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult. It was very difficult for me to do that. So anyway, so I started studying this whole thing about mindfulness, and I focused it on. I said, well, this whole process takes twelve hours. I get on the train in New Haven at five o'clock in the morning, and more than likely, I'm back in New Haven at uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. And so I had I had projected and I had, I had manifested me going through that entire race, that whole entire course, not a race, it's a, a tour, entire course, because I've been through it three times before that. And I, I remember the times that were difficult. I remember where the, the, the areas where I had to go up hills and down hills and when I was tired. And, and and so I had focused on that and I had projected that and I had mentally created that whole 12 hour period to the point where I was even back at my, in my house taking a shower and like celebrating my having a steak and a martini. <laughs> And and then and then I woke up next day and and I for, I had forgotten that I had did the tour and my body mm -hmm. wasn't any pain at all. It was just like I just woke up the next day and just went for a walk. Mm -hmm. It was it was that it was that that discipline, that mental and physical discipline that got me to that point. And so lately, I've just been reading books on like mindfulness and like spirituality and and try to like uh, how can I improve not only myself but how I can improve. The world around me so i try to look mm -hmm. at it from from not only my family perspective my personal perspective but how i can improve the world around me and the things i try to do the world around me is like i try to do things locally with with people you know in, in, in the city of new haven and and in the work i do because i, I mean i'm 71 everybody says well you're gonna retire work, this, it's not work to me it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a lifestyle you know, it's it's a uh, it's, it's what I found is my purpose because I I really enjoy it. I felt like it's my talent, so I feel, feel like I really enjoy that. Another book, Larry, you're, you're 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 in the ninth inning, and I and okay, ninth, ninth okay. inning, okay, in the ninth the, inning, and I and okay. I have a question to ask you also, and and I but but so uh, go ahead. Okay, so go, go ahead and ask me the question. I think I, I said enough. Uh, 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 brother Sam, brother Stewart went to. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Larry. Baltimore City College, Baltimore I did. High School. Yeah, I was. It's, and we, it's, it's I Sam, I I I Sam Stevenson. I believe we know some or know some somebody called Greg and somebody called Smiley. Oh, you're kidding, Sam! You went to City. G Greg, Greg went to Bucknell, as did Smiley. And so, where did Sam and I go? You, you guys went to Bucknell, and so we saw them when they came. We were oh, there. Okay. We were there to kind of extend the right hand of fellowship to them. Okay, okay. They 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 were two years ahead of me, but they that, that that's the city college graduate. Those guys. All right. So we'll come back to that in, in the end and, and kind of lift okay. up lift up Greg's. Uh, I'm not sure if Smiley is still alive, but I know Greg has passed away. Uh, and again, not to, on a somber note, but per, 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 people ask me why have I decided to kind of bring the mighty gents together? Because yeah, we got to honor ourselves and. Honor the legacy and honor our. You never told me that, Tom. I, I didn't know you knew Greg and Smiley. All right, so again, I tea, we'll, we'll come back to that. But brother okay. Deontay, brother Dunlap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? I'm good. Thank y'all for having me. I'm, I'm. I was excited about joining this group and you know being able to to talk with y'all. Um, so I'll get right to it. Um, I took a a different approach. Um, I kind of I did come up with some some talking points, but thinking about the eight areas that Deshaun brought up earlier, if if I were to look at all of those across the board, I would say I'm averaging at about 85 percent across the board. I'm not mm. perfect, but I'm 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 doing OK. I have I have no complaints. I'm not a complainer. Right. Um, that's something that I just don't do. Um, and as Brother Larry mentioned earlier, it's all it all starts up here. It all starts in the mind. Where this begins, everything else cascades from there. So where you put your mind is where everything else is going to naturally follow, right? That's why they say mind over matter. Mind over mm. matters, pluralizes, you know, so it all mm. begins here. And so, and, and where I got that, so I, I spent about 20 years of my life as a practicing martial artist. I fought for several years as an amateur fighter, and I learned how to focus but not just focus, but to be really compartmentalized in how I focused. Mm. And so when you're training for a fight, you when you're training for a specific opponent, you train for specific, for specific habits, traits, um, patterns, and things of that nature. So you don't focus on everything, but you focus on certain things at a time. And that's how I generally learned to direct my life. So when we're talking about just using the eight areas that Deshaun brought up, when... 
when I'm when, if I'm satisfied, when, if I'm doing fine in one area, then I'll focus in on another area because I always start with the mental. If I'm not good mentally, I'm not going to be good anywhere else because the mental, it, it leads into the emotional, the physical and everything else. Because how you think controls how you eat, it controls how you behave, it controls your sleep. So it controls everything. So I'm very keen on keeping my mental condition intact and up to par. So that's where I start with everything. Mm. Um, and again, you know, I take that holistic approach. Right. I'll look at the system as a whole. And then if the system is looking good, I'll start to tweak and hone in on specific areas. And that way I'm not trying to do everything at once. Right. And so and in that and, and from that fighter's mindset, I've learned to, you know, again, take everything a piece at a time. Right. Like when I teach someone how to box, I start with how they step before I mm -hmm. teach them how to punch. And mm -hmm. once they get the step right, they're not, if I know they can close distance right, then I can get them, okay, now this is how you extend your punch. And so I work those pieces together to create a big puzzle. And so that's the way I look at everything, right? I, take, I try to take each individual piece and hone it to fit right into the puzzle. And so, and again, I take a systematic approach, right? And so the first thing I do is I'm honest with myself. You can't correct what you don't confront. Mm -hmm. if, you're not, if you're lying to yourself saying, oh, I'm, I'm 100%, my life is great. But when you're alone, you're crying, you're stressed out, you know, and you, you can't seem to get yourself together. You can't get your body to regulate. And so and when you start from that place of honesty, you start a foundation and you can't you can't build a house on a foundation of sand. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you, and you get to recognize your own complacency. What am I lying to myself about? What am I telling myself I'm good at, but that I can actually be better? You know, am, am I, you know, just because I have that salad twice a week do, don't really mean I have a really good diet. It just means <laughs> I have a salad twice a week, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's again, recognizing those areas of complacency. And next, one thing, another thing I do is I challenge my own thoughts and feelings. I try not to be my own counsel, but when I find my, because I'm a, I'm, I'm a, introvert i'm by myself most of the time if i'm not with my wife i'm usually by myself um and so i i picked up a habit of being my own counsel and over time i've found the detriments the the downfalls from being your own counsel because you don't challenge yourself you think that oh, that voice becomes right right you think you're right all the time and so i picked up a habit of challenging those things and not just not just challenging my thoughts but challenging how i feel because how you feel isn't always real Mm -hmm. Right. You can feel some way, but your life don't doesn't reflect that. You may feel depressed, but your life may not support may not mm -hmm. really support that. You might have everything going good for you, but you might deal with some depression. Right. So you have to again, it's it's being honest with yourself and it's confronting that. Um, and again, and staying important, staying grounded with what's important. I learned an acronym a while back called WIN. What's important now? Mm -hmm. So when I find myself scattered, I ask myself, okay, if I want to win, I have to focus on what's important now, what's mm -hmm. important right now. Um, another thing I've, another thing I practice often is not taking anything personal. Mm -hmm. That has been the greatest gift to me, especially in my social undertakings. Pe most people are in their own world. They're not even considering other people or how they make other people feel. And once you understand that and realize, hey, they're not doing this because of me, they're just in their own world. They're oblivious to everything else going on around them. And self-awareness is what I've, I've learned that self-awareness is a very rare thing to find in people. So um, being aware, respond. I never react. Um, I always ask clarifying questions. What do you mean by that? And then last but not least, we were talking about control. Self-control is the best control. I feel like that is the most, that is the best, greatest display of power is control. And the best control to have is self-control. Um, next, I simplify. I find out the why behind the why. I get down to the heart of the matter. Um, and then when I get down to the heart of the matter, I set my milestones because little, mm -hmm. little steps make big ones. Um, I write down, I write things down. And I put them somewhere where I can see, I see it every day. I have a whiteboard in my bedroom, me and my wife and I share that way every morning. We're looking at our goals every day Excellent. and I can, I can never forget them. And, um, and I, and I, and I find and develop tools that can help myself that can make my life easy. You know, if I'm balancing my budget, I build an Excel spreadsheet that does all my calculations for me. So I'm not figuring out where my money's at every month. So mm -hmm. I know my financial health. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the most important things that I've learned, I'm, I turned 43 this year. One of the greatest things that I've learned as a man. And I think this is something as men that we struggle with. It's a simple notion of asking for help, Mm. Mm. you know, putting out that SOS. Hey, I need you. I need you. I need some help. And so these are some of the things, these are some of the strategies and tactics that I personally use to keep myself grounded. And and again, make sure that I'm hitting, I'm firing on all cylinders in those eight areas, because you can be doing great some, some places and not in others. But if you're complacent or you lie to yourself, you'll never get down to those things. And um, I read a book that said, um, if you chase a, a person that traces, chases two rabbits, will catch neither. So you got to set your sights and be surgical. And I try my best not to do shotgun approaches to anything in life. I try to be very surgical, very deliberate in how I go about anything because how you do some things is how you do everything. And so um, and so that's how I try to direct my life, direct myself. Um, again, I, I challenge myself mentally all the time. I challenge myself emotionally all the time. So and I think if it starts with you, if you're your hardest critic, if you're if you're in tune with your number, your star player, I think those areas in life will naturally fall into place because you won't let yourself slip. And if you mm. can catch yourself, your, your village will catch you, too. Mm. Mm. So, mm. Mm. G- Gary, I hadn't reached out to you uh, prior in terms of your actually presenting, but it seems to me and I've seen you in various uh, settings. So I, I know you you're able to kind of uh, share share a few words with us. And guess this, guess when I'm just looking at you, my mind goes back to when you came before the automatic committee for the various commissions that you're on, not to mention the the, the monk family and, and your and the legacy here in New Haven, and even just as importantly, your involvement with with veterans affairs. Uh, so I guess wanted to give you a chance if you wanted to kind of uh, take take three or four minutes uh, if you to react to anything that you've heard thus far. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge everyone that's on this panel. I'd like to thank you for creating this space to communicate among ourselves and perhaps um, make a conversation that can continue. I haven't had everything happens inside of a conversation. Uh, Of course, it starts in your head, but, you know, among one another, having that conversation and we comprehend what we're communicating to each other, we can create anything and make it happen. So with that, I'm listening to you everyone and I'm, I'm just uh test moving inspired because you see we don't get a chance or we don't that often come together and talk communicate share our experiences and things that we see everyone has different different perspectives on life we have different experiences in life and um i heard everything from martial artists to uh, other military men, uh, educators, um, intellectuals, et cetera. You, you guys really light me up today. So I just want to put that out there first. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You see, I'm a vegan as well. And I and I became a vegan years ago. I became a vegan so long ago, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I feel that it's um, it's imperative that we as a people look at what we consume mm. we we were the first ones to uh, experiment with different things that are edible we know what seasons to eat it in we know when it's poisonous we know when it's most potent you know so it's really important to remember i mean you just even look at your teeth right now um they're not for tearing okay you look at what the powers to be would have you eat to keep you sick. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you're eating different animal things that are not good for you. You're eating uh, seeds that are what they are. Seeds have nitrogen in them. (laughs) So when they hit your intestines, they have an adverse effect on on you. Um, So it's important to know that your food are, it's as well your medicine. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I fast. I'm just getting back on the boat. I'm in it, you know. But um, I fast um, every solstice. And the last one was June, um, summer solstice. And it, it gets you present to why you're eating. Mm. Mm. And um, 
also, of course, it puts you in your real your spiritual mode then. So you have a different consciousness than you do when you're eating. And uh, I I won't go to the left and the right. I'm just throwing a few things out. That's and great. so you know, I just want you to get that um, where I'm sitting right now, I want to see you young men again. I wish we could create some kind of connectiveness between us uh, where we can invite other brothers yes. of like minds to join us. Um, the world, men talk about, and then we jump, talk about mental health. The world's mental health, it's suspect. <laughs> it's like, wow, you know, we are in a vacuum, so to speak, now due to technology. So we can see what they're doing. We can see what they're doing on the other side of the world instantaneously. Um, just before we, just before sure. we open it up, Gary, uh, share with everyone, because I, I haven't asked folks particularly to, reference their their career or their background and, and and that's been intentional for folks just to kind of share as it as the spirit moves them but i do want to put you on the spot and just sure. share a few words about your involvement with with veterans affairs that's uh yeah. so, so important and i just no noticed you over the years and it still is controversial yeah. and then folks still aren't getting their 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 rights and their and their sure. uh, and their and their due due process if you will sure absolutely i'm the executive director of the national veterans council for legal redress my brother and I, Colleen, Colleen Monk uh, Jr., we founded the National Veterans Council uh, roughly 2012. We, when we first came together, we called ourselves um, the undesirables. My brother um, did two tours of Vietnam, came back with bad papers, and couldn't get his job back at the VA. He was uh, self-medicating. Uh, he had PTSD, and you know, before the word was uh, was given. And so what he did was um, he became a drug counselor because he was doing methadone and getting himself healthy or getting himself uh, together. And inside of that, he saw that he wanted to people want let people know that Vietnam veterans were uh, not looked upon as heroes and they fought just like World War II and any other veterans. Um, so we are uh, the founders of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Monument on the Long Wharf, the V that mm -hmm. you see on, on the Long Wharf, mm -hmm. we put that there. We raised a quarter million dollars to, to have that place there. So when we initially did it, we put the veterans that would transition, had transition at that time, but we were going back now to put the veterans that are alive now, because of course everyone's going to transition eventually. So we want to get them on the monument as well. Um, we have other renderings or sketches that we want to create something different so we won't put it on that monument. Uh, we could, we're really looking at doing a pier. We would love to do a pier. Um, it'd be reflective of that V right there in front of it. Um, yeah. Our mission really is to work with veterans to get their discharges upgraded and as well as get their benefits. There's a lot of veterans that um, have all kind of invisible, visible injuries as well as physical. But because of the system, they don't want to go and get to just do or, or get the medication or get the compensation or get the services that they need. So we refer organizations. So we work with veterans uh, really across the nation. Uh, but here in New and Connecticut, we're very powerful. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, my brother is the first plaintiff or well, was the lead plaintiff on the um, Chuck Hagel memo, which determined that any veteran that has PTSD or TBI or any related diseases should be given liberal consideration to get their discharges upgraded. Um, they won this class action back in uh, 20, once in 2013. As a result of that, it was a snowball effect. Uh, the various branches of the military has been charged to uh, do the right thing by giving the veterans their benefits and discharge yeah. upgraded. It's and you know, Gary, I'm going to share with everyone your, your sure. link also to your organization. All right. Thank really you. I'm really glad for you to, glad for you to mention that. Brother Sam Stevenson is here. And I, I see Deshaun, I see there may be like 10, 10 things that you want to jump in on. So just, just hold hold your mule for there just for a second as we open it up for, for discussion, yeah, Kevin. But Sa Sam Stevenson, yeah, yeah, Larry, uh, Sam and I laid eyes on one another back in 1967. So we, we we've had a chance to kind of his, his his hair was a little bit not not as gray as it is now and mine is not is you know I, I use some dye I use more before the shows I put on more dye so I, I'll be full, fully transparent with with, with you guys but hey we all get our mm -hmm. vanities Br brother Sam unmute yourself and share a little bit before we open it up 
Okay, I, I thought you had me muted, actually. I, I, I did, I did, I oh. did. But but I, I've known over the last 30, 40 years, that's impossible to do in a, on a, a continual basis. So you, you, you're, yeah. you're more powerful. Um, first, let me say, uh, I've been impressed with everything I've heard from you brothers so far this evening. Um, I do not know what all the eight elements are that that you were discussing, but I did take some notes on a couple of them and, and, and I can speak to them. Um, I think the first one that I caught was physical. Mm. Um, and it's not so much by way of confession, but more so by way of honesty uh, that I will say to, to all of you, I am not a vegan. <laughs> I am unabashedly out of it. I am careful with my diet, though. I don't just eat anything you place in front of me. I need to know where it came from, who prepared it, so that I have a certain level of trust. Uh, so moving on into to the physical piece, um, I'm 73 years old. I like to tell my young cousins, my niece, most of whom call me Uncle Sam, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that I'm actually on my way down the backside of the hill now. So a lot of the things that they worry about I don't need to worry about anymore. Mm. I've kind of concluded that from a physicality standpoint, I do some exercising. I do not work out like I worked out when I was 55 or even when I was 60. Um, when my PCP told me no more lifting weights over your head, I was done. <laughs> okay. So I continue to work out. Mostly these days, it's stretching. Stretching, very important. I stretch at least five to six times a week in the mornings. Sometimes I'll do it in the, in the afternoons or in the evenings. And then I have a minor amount of weight training that I continue to do, along with some cardio. So there are some things that I do from a physical perspective. Um, I, as Tom well knows, I, I play golf as often as I can. I don't get to play as much as I want, but I play as often as I mm -hmm. can. And, and live near, li you live relatively near a course, I believe. Uh, they're all, this is Pittsburgh, so there are all kinds of courses. Okay, all right. This, this this place this place has more public golf courses than any place that is not a major golf destination. Mm, mm. So, um, and and that's just public courses. Mm -hmm. um, so I have ways of getting my physical uh, needs met there. From a mental perspective. I'm involved in any number of uh, activities and continue to be involved in those activities. So I get to share thoughts with brothers and sisters about many of the things that impact our communities uh, here in the Western Pennsylvania region. Um, I continue to be actively engaged, even though I'm retired. I've been retired for roughly 10 years, but I am engaged with a number of boards that involve the African-American community, as well as certain business things that I'm engaged in, that I continue to be engaged mm -hmm. in. I get a lot of opportunity to trade and share um, mental um, challenges through those activities. On the emotional end, I kind of go back to my childhood. Mm. And, um, 
I was I was raised in a single parent household from the time I was approximately 10 years old, nine, 10 years old. My parents separated. My father was deported by the time I was 13, 14. But so my mother raised my sister and I. Um, but I'm from a large family that continues to be in contact with one another mm, excellent. regularly. <clears throat> this family um, has had a, I, I just came back from a family reunion about um, last weekend, two weekends ago. Okay. This family has had a some form of family reunion every year of my life, mm. with the exception of probably three, two of which came during the COVID period. Mm -hmm. So I have a large extended family that I draw, draw on for emotional support. Excellent. And all of you look like you're from black families. <laughs> so I think you understand the spirituality that goes into having that type of support system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I've watched, um, particularly in my generation and family, and we're the for, for this particular part of my family, we're the we're the fifth generation that we can that we can go back from when we left the plantation in slavery. Mm -hmm. um, I've watched as our spirituality has blossomed and moved into other places, mm. and it's been. It's been heartening to watch sometimes. And at other times, it's been disheartening to watch. Mm. Mm. All the religions that we are told about are not necessarily places that I might want to step into. Mm. I've been raised Christian Baptist. I retain that affiliation uh, even as of today. So on the mental side, as I said, I have a I have a very large support system, and I, th I think one of the things, and Tom and I have talked about this probably quite a bit over the last six months. Um, as I watch some of my very close friends and my closest friends go back to my childhood and my high school days, my closest friends, and also some to my college days as I have a wide fraternity network as well. Um, but as I watch us get into this period of aging that we are in now, and as I see what's happening to some of them from a physical perspective, it makes my spirituality come out even more mm. because I don't question why God has blessed me so, so much. But I do wonder mm. why God has blessed me so much. And am I really deserving? Mm. Mm. Now, I have a lot of friends who are also ministers, pastors. And without question, I go through that conversation with some of them sometimes. Mm. And... Um, I, I think what, what they lead me to believe is you must learn how to receive those blessings mm. to continue to get them. Mm. So I am hoping and praying that I've done the things that I need to do to continue to receive those blessings. Mm. I'm not a guy that goes to church regularly. I probably go once a month, once every two months. But I speak to God every day. Mm. And I hope that what I'm hearing in my head is him speaking back. 
socially, as, as I mentioned to you, I'm, I'm engaged in any number of things locally. Um, I used to be engaged in things from a national perspective with respect with regards to my profession. Um, I'm, a, I'm a retired CPA. Um, spent a lot of years traveling back and forth any number of places doing what we do for a living. Um, but socially, locally, I'm engaged in, in any number of things. And I think I have a good network through those things that I do. What I am trying to do, as I explained a little bit earlier, as I tell my my younger cousins, et cetera, that I'm on the backside of the hill, I have people who call me from time to time looking for someone to do this, for someone to do that. And I think that at this point in my life and in my career, I am responsible to create as many opportunities for young black professionals that I can. Mm -hmm. So when they call and they ask me, well, can you serve on this? Can you do this? Can you do that? Generally, what I'm telling them today is that I don't need the network anymore, but I know any number of young black professionals that do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put you together with them yes, so that you can help expand their network and create the opportunities for them that were created for me so that they can meet their professional and emotional and spiritual goals in life. Excellent. So Excellent. that's kind of where, where my head is on that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm a retired CPA. I'm still engaged in some boards, um, African American Chamber of Commerce Board. We have an organization here called the Regional Industrial Development Corporation, which is responsible for creating spaces for business and industry to move into. Mm -hmm. um, I chair that board. Uh, I'm also involved with the board of a bank. I chair their audit committee and their community engagement committee. Um, so I got a lot of stuff that I'm still engaged with. Uh, needless to say, as I mentioned, also, I am a fraternity person. That, that Tom Ficklin guy over there, he was my line brother. Uh, so we went over together, same time, same place, same station. Um, and I'm engaged there with uh, their the, the the scholarship and endowment fund. So our thing there, of course, is to to raise money to provide scholarships and and things of that nature for African American young people who are moving from high school to a four year college and to community college, mm -hmm. for which we provide what we call uh, book grants. I don't know when the last time any of you <laughs> were in a classroom as a student, <laughs> okay, in, in a college, or university, or community college, but um, they can almost spend as much for books now as we spent for tuition <laughs> back in the day. So uh, that's my story. Um, again, it's been good to to hear what you fellows are engaged in, how you look at life. I I get a little sense of what your personal philosophies might be. Um, I haven't heard anything this evening that I reject. Excellent, excellent. A affirmation is important. Let Let's open it up. For, you know, let, let's. I mentioned fifty five minutes, but uh, if folks can kind of hang in there for for maybe ten more minutes, that would be great. Any comments, reflections? Uh, uh, additional sharing that anyone would like to like to like to uh, reveal, Brother Dunlap. I have, I have a a question for you. Um, your win acronym. Yes. Um. Does that also project to the future? Well, it's really because well, as it, I it can. as I listen to you say it, you know, I was thinking that, you know. You could also put a T on the end of that for tomorrow. 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's kind of what I mentioned about setting your milestones, right? If you're looking at things from a strategic perspective, it's like, okay, what I do now determines what I could do tomorrow. So yeah, what's important now would determine what you're able to do. Mm. So yes, you're absolutely right. Um, because again, each step leads to the next. And I'm a firm believer if I did the decisions I make now opens the door for the decisions I get to choose next. So yeah, so absolutely. So I'm all, but I'm always focused. Like I try to stay, cause I, I deal, one of the things I deal with a lot is anxiety. And so my, the way I, um, my judo around my own personal anxiety mm -hmm. is to focus on what's in front of me. Cause I can't, I can't guess what's going. Cause if once I start formulating and, and postulating what's going to happen next, I get into analysis paralysis. Cause I'm an analyst by profession, and um, and I'll start thinking about this, 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 and I'm like, nope, I can't. I got to stay right here, or I'll get nowhere. And because I'll start chasing those rabbits, and I won't get any of them, and I'll be just sitting in the middle, empty-handed. So yes, but to your point, digressing to your original point, yes, what's important now does lead to what's important tomorrow. Good, 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 Thank good. You. I just wanted to add, I was um I was blessed by everything that was said, but one of the things was uh Brother Stewart said um the importance of expressing yourself physically. Um I had major surgery um just this past May and it was uh back and I can tell you the um orthopedic ward at night is like a civil war battlefield. It was mostly men and, you know, you just hear a lot of moaning and groaning and <laughs> hitting the button for the nurses to come and, and everybody's in pain. And you have to um, decide that um, you're going to get up and start walking. And um, it's not easy. You know, for me, it was a very spiritual thing. Um, I believe it's the book of John, chapter five, where Jesus tells a man to take up his bed and walk. But um, as I was walking, there was a family that was, I think this is one of the youngest person on the floor. I think she had been in a car accident or something. And you could tell she was mentally, she was devastated. Her family pointed to me and said, look, you know, one day you're going to be able to get up like that and walk. Um, and And it was really that whole thing of like, you know, that whole mental part, you know, Brother Dunlap meant, mentioned it, you know, where it's just like all of you actually mentioned it, where you just have to decide in your mind, you know, am I going to lay here? Um, and my goal was to walk myself out of that, mm. you know, out of that ward, um, you know, because it could be the difference between you being there a week versus a month, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, so. So I, I just really wanted to to commend everybody on the panel um, because you all, you know, mentioned that that aspect where you really have to make some decisions. And it's, you know, as an educator, really trying to get these especially young men to understand that um, you really have to decide um, within yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brother Stewart. Uh, that the mindset means a, a hell of a lot. I, I too it went through just last year. I went through a operation. I had to go back in four four weeks later. They took a foot of my colon out, and the, the doctor said, "You know, you can't go out of here until you walk down the hall, walk up these steps, walk down these steps." And and I and I got operated on Tuesday. And I said, "I'm getting out of here by Friday," and I was out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the mindset. The mind, mindset is, is the whole combination of the mind, spiritual, the body thing. That, that's, that's the whole thing that, you know, because, I mean, it may sound corny, but what the what the mind can perceive, the body can achieve. Mm. You know, mm. and one thing I know in, in endurance races, endurance events, <clears throat> your body will tell you a long time before, you know, I need to give this up. Mm -hmm. It's your mind that keeps you going. Yeah. And, you know, and, yes. Go ahead, please. And I would definitely say um, it's one of those things that you, you you definitely said when you put everything, even these elements, we stretch them out. It always comes down to the mind, body and soul. And the one thing that everybody says is it always starts with your mind. 
your body can wither away for, faster than your mind. But if you have a strong mindset, you're going to eat right. You're going to take care of your body. And it seemed like every single person here has that that same mental mentality. I was smiling and laughing because it just seems so connected. Like Brother mm -hmm. Dunlap, I am a martial artist as well. I competed in mixed martial arts up until 2015. You know, I could see the way you talk. Somebody else was showing, um, Brother Stan said, the way you act, are you a Christian? Because that's what you're curious of. I could see it as a martial artist, how you are, how the mind can control certain things. I know Brother um, Monk, you may not know your son was my line brother we're in the same fraternity one of my favorite people um um you know i haven't seen him in a while but you know when when um brother stevenson said that he was in a fraternity i was like oh i wonder which one you were brother stewart you were in the military my father's in the military we're all connected in some types mm -hmm. of way but yeah. one thing that every single person on this panel has is a strong mindset and with that you can do any single thing and that's why yeah. sharing my profession why it touches me so well when you ask when's the last time you was in the school Last year, I went back, got a doctorate degree and focused on um, population health. And my specialty is in psychiatric epidemiology because it's all about the moment. You know, the mind is the one thing that nobody really has a solid grasp on. So you're still trying to learn. And once you have this, anything else you can do. You know, and yeah. that's just why I, I, I really enjoyed this conversation. And, and Larry, just as you were chatting, just reminded me that you and I are, are prostate thrivers. Brother Stewart. What did you say, Tom? That you and I um, had, I had I had the radiation. Did you had the? Did you have prostate surgery? Or did you have I, the radiation? No, I had the radiation and chemo. No, I had radiation and uh, uh, seed implants. Indeed, back back in the day, and, and that, that was that was almost thirty years ago, Tom. Indeed, and brother Sam just reminded me that you and you and I both share hipsters. I had my right hip done, and you had was it your right or your left? I had my left hip done. Your left hip done. So you know, you know what. That was the easiest part of that entire thing. I wound up with a UTI that put me back in the hospital for four or five days. The, the sepsis it, thing, I think. So it true. threw my recovery off by almost a month. Mm -hmm. but the hip was the easiest part. As a matter of fact, my wife just had her hip done last Tuesday. Mm. So I'm, mm. I'm, I'm the caregiver this week. <laughs> and, and that's so powerful and it speaks to what brother monk was talking about earlier because when i was in the hospital the opioids made me sick mm. and what people don't know is they mess up your stomach um they they constipate you and the um anesthesia so my stomach got distended you know it was basically like a hard watermelon Mm. And yeah. so I had to make a decision. I tell people, I, God told me, you going on a Daniel fast impromptu. <laughs> and I just drank water and I told my family, bring me in fresh fruit. I'm not eating this food. Yeah. And that's how I was eventually able to get up, um, was basically water and, and, and fresh fruit. So it, it speaks to everything you, you just said, especially Mr. Uh, Stevenson. I didn't even go in for that. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was my back. You know, the yeah. funny thing is, um, I would I'll tell you what, say, one, yeah. one thing that one of my, I had not spent a night in a hospital from the time I was six years old until 2015. And I had a very severe muscle spasm that felt like a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And as soon as my PCP took a picture of my chest, he sent me right across the street to the hospital hmm. to be taken care of. But that one night stay in the hospital taught me one thing, regardless of who you are, what you go in for, you must look out for yourself. That's for sure. Those people may be professionals. That's for sure. Well-meaning. But if you don't look out for yourself while you're that's, in there, any that's bad for sure. can happen to you. Brother Stewart, I just want to say before I, I, I shut up for a while, um, Smiley Myers, Alonzo Myers, did pass before Greg Wright did. He mm. did, okay. Mm. Yeah, he did. Smiley had kidney, he had kidney problems when he was at Bucknell, so. Mm. Okay. They they were seniors when I was a, a, a sophomore. Mm. And okay. so, uh, you know, I mean, it was an all-boys school, so we actually looked up to these guys. And then when they went to Bucknell, with, with Coach Pat, with uh, Bob Patchwell, I believe they went there. Was he the football coach there when he when he came in? Uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to remember that guy's name. 
I don't. I, don't I can't remember. remember the coach's name. <laughs> I don't remember the reason name. why I say that because I I just we were just somebody in the and when I went to city but just mentioned Greg's name just the other day. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Greg was a great great guy. He he did recruiting for them for years. He used to stop by every now and then when he was in Pittsburgh. Mm. Yeah. I mean, for, for those of you who don't know, City was the third oldest public high school in the country. Mm. Mm. Didn't know that. Mm. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear from a few other folks. In terms uh, of in terms of timing, uh, I believe in this Sankofa time and Sammy and, and Dante, you kind of referenced the how do you center yourself in, in the present, but still be active in the future? I like the Sankofa bird kind of symbol, which I try to remind myself where it is possible to look look back, be centered and look at the future at the same time. So Sankofa time, I try to kind of just remember that, that, that you can be integrated in terms of your vision and but still keep your eye on the prize. It's funny that you say that because um, my one of my businesses is um, the 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 logo is a Sankofa bird. It's called Evolve Back. And I said, in order to evolve, sometimes you got to look back. And I use the Sankofa bird as well. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That Sankofa bird is, is my uh, family's uh, reunion symbol. Mm -hmm. Look back to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And what, what we what we do, we have like uh, a griot hour where the elders sit down and tell about stories about when they were young just to maintain a family lineage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and brother monk you've had a number of your your your, your family has had a, a number of uh, uh family reunions here in here and here here and far yes um on that note, too, well, we just had celebrated our 61st anniversary, Monk Singers anniversary, which evolved into a family yes. reunion. So we've been doing that for 61 years. Um, we're creating a, another train ride. We did one pre-COVID, and whereas we have um, the core train stop, so we're stopping New Jersey and we're stopping Philly on the way to uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and then we'll do the country. And so we have a whole list of things set up for uh, the children to learn and my sister Pamela has written um a couple books already on both sides of the family, my mom mm -hmm. and pop side. And so it's incredible that um what we as a people have done. And uh I was just gonna say you were saying, you know, would you guys chime in some more? I just wanted to say between us, I would like to see us create some sort of legacy per se. Um of course, our children are a legacy mm -hmm. sometimes, and you've done something great as a legacy sometimes, but I want to be intentional about us creating something together collectively right. uh, to to uh, have a legacy, something that will impact for generations to come. Yes. Talking about Sankofa yes. Bird. Yeah. Yes. I embrace that. I embrace yes. that. Yes. Deontay, you, you work also at uh, one of the is it at Google? Where, where do you work again? I was intrigued when I looked up a little bit of your background. So I I work for I work for Whole Foods, uh, Whole, Whole Foods. Foods Market. Um, I know you know there there was the vegan special diets out there. I got a joke where I was a vegan for like two hours. I tried soy when I first started at Whole Foods. I tried soy yogurt for the first time. I was like, I'm going to be vegan. And I tried soy yogurt and decided in that moment that I wasn't going to be vegan. <laughs> I was like, yeah, nope, I'm not going to do this. But I've been I've been at Whole Foods now. Um, this month, it'll be 24 years. Hmm. So I basically grew up there. So, um, yeah, and, and now it's Whole Foods and Amazon. So um, and, and I spent most of my time doing IT work um, while while I was there. So. I've been I've been there. I'm, I'm I, I tell everybody I'm a Whole Foods fossil. <laughs> Whenever we talk about tenure and things of that nature, so yeah, I'm very very well aware of special diets and um, animal welfare. Um, made me highly conscientious about what actually goes into food and and what's in some of these preservatives and chemicals that they put into our food. Um, you know, just learn just learning from the company and learning from people that are helping me kind of figure out what I was doing, learning more about the why of Whole Foods kind of helped me grow and, and learn about these things and just created a whole nother awareness to food. Cause and before working there, I worked for KFC as a cook. 
So you there was a very stark, sharp transition mm. to go from one to another and to learn so much about food that I didn't even think was even that I couldn't even fathom until that point. And now I'm and now I have this this I I, I, won't, I won't I'm not as knowledgeable as some of the people I know, but I know way more about food, nutrition, special diets, you know, chemicals, what's good for you, what's not, just by osmosis and learning from other people and just being around it all the time. Excellent. Is it okay that we take another five minutes or so in terms of, I know it's dinner time or wherever you might be, but can, can we go for a little longer or do how do other people, I wanna, don't wanna impose upon everyone. I'm probably good. I For five, I have a great granddaughter that's on her way here. All right, let's just start it off three weeks ago. So let, let, let's let's, let's do, another, do, 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 another, do another five then. Any, any uh, burning questions or thoughts or as a spirit might be moving? I have one or two things I wanted to ask, but it, it can wait until until we do uh, again. Because we'll I do have, another, a, I have we'll a quick do. one mm -hmm. um, just for especially for cats in the in, you know, men in, in the local area. Um, one of the things that happened during COVID was I started going for um, nature walks. And I discovered a lot of places in the local area that I never paid much attention to because I was going to the gym. And when all those gyms closed down, I, I found a, a lot of places. Um, for example, you know, Lake Wintergreen, mm -hmm. you know, right over in Hamden, and just, you know, with people and their dogs and how quiet and peaceful that is. And um, also behind uh, Eli Whitney, the um, museum on Whitney Avenue. Yeah, there's a whole trail that runs back there, especially if you have a, a dog. And and so just like sharing that with people and having people understand, uh, we take the students. We do this thing called an existential walk with the kids. And, you know, you put your phones away and you actually get a moment where you're just with your own thoughts mm. and and processing and the students really uh, appreciated it um, because they just really need to learn how to unplug Excellent. um you know as we know you know especially with ai and everything you know it's it's a good to you know i think denzel said it are you using the phone or is the phone using you mm. Mm. So um, it's it's something to be be conscious of. So just for local folks, um, that's that was huge for my wellness. Excellent. So we're going to do it again in September. Again, we we'll extend we we'll extend the right hand of fellowship to everyone. Uh, Sam, I'm tempted for, to ask you to kind of share a little bit about your African American Chamber experience locally as well as nationally, because. Uh, Deshaun is an, is an entrepreneur. Larry, is a, as, as he, he's referenced, has been an entrepreneur for, for some time. Uh, Gary has, everyone on this panel is kind of a, has that business spirit, but that would be a, maybe another show. But, but, but do, do, you, do you have a, a two, 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 two minute soundbite on, 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 on Black businesses, entrepreneurial, your involvement with the chamber? Um, you know, yeah, I can, I, I can, I can get it to two. All right. Um, if you are an African American entrepreneur, and you have a sense of community with the African American community, it should be important to be engaged with your local African American Chamber of Commerce, mm. because even if there's not a lot that it can do for you. And typically chambers of commerce, they're they're kind of like networking, uh, facilitation. And with ours, we also do a lot of foundational things uh, that bring speakers in. We're in business and government that can relate to things that you might want to or need to know, um, but also things that are foundational to entrepreneurism, such as making sure you have contacts in the legal community, understanding business concepts, bringing experts in to teach you what the, the best means of developing your elevator pitch is, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I am a big uh, proponent of African-American chambers. Some chambers, 
are more aggressive in terms of trying to go out and get business for their members. Ours was never that one. Ours was one to protect opportunity. Mm. Because we, I was there at the founding. As a matter of fact, I was the first president. Our entire thing at that point in time was to beat back an attempt by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to eliminate certain programs that were beneficial to mm -hmm. African businesses. So, mm -hmm. and we were successful ultimately. You know, took a lot of trips to the state capitol, took a lot of lobbying with a lot of representatives, uh, but ultimately we were able to beat that back. So if you have an opportunity to engage with uh, your local one, um, please do. You guys sound like any of you who might be entrepreneurs would be able to help guide your chamber. Excellent. Excellent. That it may need to be going if it's not already doing that. Okay. In Tom, room? Tom, if I may add that uh, I, I am the chairperson of the Black Business Alliance in the state of Connecticut. Uh, and have been for the last five, which essentially is essentially a chamber of commerce for African American businesses, Sam. Uh, and I've been the chairman for the last five years, and I'll be the chairman for another couple of months. I hear you. Well, I, I, but but you but you I, I not going. He's, like, he's not going away. He doesn't. He says he's not going away. He's just passing the baton. So that's right. I'm. I'll still be on the board. But it's time for new blood to come in. Well, that's what I keep telling our board members. I've been the chairman of our chamber's board since 2006. And it's well past time to hand the baton to Shikari yeah. and let her finish off the race. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, I want to thank thank everyone. Uh, in terms of our September meeting, I'm going to send out the email and for some to get some suggestions for folks on what the topic should be. For September, Deshaun was really tremendous to kind of give me four or five uh, suggestions for today's today's theme. And but I want to open it up for what might be on people's spirit about what we can discuss in, in September, you know, in October and, and November, and also to keep in mind G Gary's affirmation and vision about what what legacy means, not only just boring infrastructure, but but a, vi a vibrant way of communing on a regular basis and having something uh, that that is, is generational in its impact. So I just want to thank everybody. If that's if that's okay, we're gonna gonna kind of sign off and and, and we'll, we'll do it again. All right, guys, it's really right. good to see you, you fellas. Yes. Really enjoyed it. Yes. Talk yes. to y'all. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Take care. Be Have safe. Yes. Thank well, you. guys. All right. All right. God bless. <laughs> All good right. night. <clears throat>